Good morning, dear friends. This is the good news for today, Friday, November the 10th. And I'm going, and I have chosen Matthew 14, 13 to 21. And I will be reading from Eugene Peterson's The Message. And the passage before this was the death of John. Uh, his head was severed and presented on a platter to the king. And so when Jesus got the news, he slipped away by boat to an out-of-the-way place by himself. But unsuccessfully, someone saw him and word got around. Soon, a lot of people from the nearby villages walked around the lake to where he was. And when he saw them coming, he was overcome with pity and healed their sick. Towards evening, the disciples approached him. We're, we're out in the country and it's getting late. Dismiss the people so that they can go to the villages and get some supper. But Jesus said, there is no need to dismiss them. You give them supper. All we have are five loaves of bread and two fish, they said. And Jesus said, bring them here. Then he had the people sit on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish, lifted his face to heaven in prayer, blessed, broke, and gave the bread to the disciples. The disciples then gave the food to the congregation. They all ate their fill. They gathered 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 were fed. So this passage has a moral lesson. Matthew begins with Jesus and his disciples leaving behind the crowds by boat to a desolate place. Instead, they find the crowds waiting there for them. Jesus heals people and eventually tells the disciples to feed everyone. As we stand in the shoes of the disciples in Matthew's account, we are to obey Jesus' command. We are to offer resources to him to bless and multiply and take responsibility not to keep for ourselves, but to give to others. Jesus' feeding of the 5,000 is a gentle reminder to our daily Christian lives that nothing we face on earth is too big for God. Jesus is big enough for any of our expectations and he uses other people to bless others, and ultimately it shows Jesus' compassion for his people. You love us all and make us your brothers and sisters. You call us to follow you. You invite us to announce the good news. The feeding of the 5,000 is meant to want to help someone who is hurting or in distress. When Jesus saw that the crowd was hungry, he didn't just feel bad for them. He took action to help them. We receive the humble gift given by the boy and miraculously turn those small loaves and fish into enough food for thousands. He teaches the importance of sharing and making the most of what you have and that Christians must place their trust in God. Saturday, November the 11th is Remembrance Day. And I found this poem, it's a beautiful poem and I'd like to read it. I, I don't know the author. Last night I had the strangest dream I'd ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed I saw a mighty room filled with women and men, and the paper they were signing said they'd never fight again. And when the paper was all signed and a million copies made, 
They all joined their hands and bowed their heads, and grateful prayers were said. And sorry, and grateful prayers were prayed. And the people in the streets below were dancing round and round while swords and guns and uniforms were scattered on the ground. Last night I had the strangest dream I had never dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. And I also found, and this is for Sunday's reading actually, but I, I just thought it was fitting for the end. And it's 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus God will bring them, God will bring with him those who have, a, I'm sorry, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command and with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Isn't that wonderful? Therefore, encourage one another with, the, with these words. I thought that passage was very fitting for Remembrance Day. So thank you very much. God bless. Take care and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.